What's up again, everybody? We are back at it after a fantastic calling weekend here in DFW. And there's some stuff to talk about. And it's surprisingly varied and uh, not exactly what you would normally expect. First of all, let's get the uh, obvious out of the way. Uh, Living Legend has come for uh, Lexi Livewire. Lexi Livewire has officially crossed the threshold into the Living Legend status, and it is guaranteed at this point that she is rotating out of the format on November the 6th. I believe it is confirmed as November the 6th, not November the 4th. It's actually November the 6th. So that means that she is no longer live for the World Championships. But this is this is what we assumed. Everybody knows that Lexi was literally on her last leg. She just had to like stumble, maybe like kind of trip over her one foot, like over the other one. And then she's at the living legend status. It was a sneeze, blink and you miss it moment. And there it is. The real question that I have is whether or not Icelander actually crosses the threshold as well. Don't forget, it is four points per pro quest season. So these pro quests that are going on right now now get you four points per win. So if Icelander wins like 33 more or something like that, she crosses the threshold into Living Legend status as well. But here's the thing, that's kind of an aggressive number for Icelander, particularly with the idea that Lexi can still go out there and play in this ProQuest season. You can still go out there and win games and ProQuests with Lexi currently. Though you may not want to, because for some reason, she just may not be the best deck anymore in the format. But before we get too far, as we close into the holiday season, if you would like to participate with me on something, I have this available for you in the Discord. We're doing Fab Advent Calendars. I am going to send you a box of 25 individually wrapped and packaged packs booster packs of flesh and blood from all 11 sets in history. You've got crew, you've got arc, you've got WTR, you've got monarch, you've got tails, you've got everything, a pack or two or three of every set. And I'm going to randomize them, put them in individually labeled envelopes, and you can open them every day in the month of December leading up to the December 25th, Christmas day. So if you would like to play along with me, hop into the Discord, you can pick up one of these boxes. I do these every year, this is the third year I've done it. If you wanna play along with me, it's gonna be an absolute blast. Last year was crazy. Some of my friends opened up Fiendal Spring Tunics from WTR. I think we even had a Krunik opened as well. Uh, I think I uh, purchased some TOA uh, first edition. I think I still have a Mon first that I might include. It depends on if I got Mon U or Mon first. Either way, there's gonna be cold foils, gonna be a blast we're all gonna get together share in the holiday spirit on discord as we open them each day it becomes a wonderful little experience where you have your friends and you're all posting what you got each day and just enjoying the packs enjoying the art enjoying the game of flesh and blood so if you'd like to join in hop into the discord link in the description so that you can get more info you can buy a box i'll ship it to you and you'll have it in time for december if you want to get one for your friend or your loved one or just for you to open along with me uh, feel free to check that out down there. Lexi can still go out there and play in this ProQuest season. You can still go out there and win games and ProQuests with Lexi currently. Though you may not want to, because for some reason, she just may not be the best deck anymore in the format, because here comes Dromai Ash Artist, and this is where we're settling as far as the topic is for today. The meta that we've been in for so long and what was assumed to not really be affected too much by the most recent set Bright Lights may actually be a complete lie and a sham because Lexi Livewire, the de facto best deck in the format, being played by very high level players, world champions, pro tour champions, was pushed down a little bit this past weekend by Dromai Ash Artist. And in fact, there were four Dromais in the top eight of the Calling DFW. And that number is incredible. Well, let's talk about why. And I don't know. Let's check right now. I'm very curious. If we go to events and go to deck lists, 
do they have the deck lists up? Yes, they do. You'll love to see it. So if you didn't know, spoiler alert, the calling was won by Dromai, and it was a Dromai mirror in the finals. And the meta that we're going into might just be the coolest, craziest, weirdest meta that we've seen thus far, partially because Dromai is now taking up the reins of the best deck, and maybe even before Lexi even goes away, because we saw Dromai kind of stomp on some Lexis a little bit this time around. And what we originally assumed would kind of be the case early in this meta, and that like Dromai was sort of the counter to Lexi, really didn't come to fruition in the way that we would expect, but here is the winning list by Guy Cohen on Dromai. And well, it kind of did just do exactly what we thought back in the day. It finally fulfilled its destiny and became sort of the de facto best hero and best deck with decent matchups all around. So taking a look at this list, I think there's a couple of things that we want to talk about. And the biggest one that we want to talk about is way here at the bottom. It is Tome of the Imperial Flame. Tome of the Imperial Flame is the brand new card from Bright Lights. And you would think that, you know, Bright Lights being an all Mechanologist set would be really, you know, game changing for Mechanologist. And you'd be right. I think there's a lot of new stuff that Mechanologist can do with these new cards. But Tome of the Imperial Flame is the standout breakout card from this set. And it serves to do absolutely insane things for Dromai. This is essentially the three of a kind that Dromai has access to. This is a codex that Dromai can play into. And quite frankly, it is incredibly, incredibly powerful and has really pushed her to uh, new heights. Now, the construction of this particular list is one that I will break down in a separate video and uh, kind of make my own sort of assumptions and uh, beliefs into. I'll talk about it at length a little bit more, but I also want to point out that this is not the only way that a top winning Dromai deck was constructed. I mean, you're looking at this, we've got two Billowing Mirage, two Burn the Malls. Like there's some really interesting things to discuss. Obviously we're running like Fate for Scenes and Sink Belows, uh, Sigils of Solace. There's like, there's a lot to talk about with this list that I really, really enjoy. I love the inclusion of Thaw as a nice little dance around for uh, Frost Bites, which I think is really cool. And you're still playing a couple of blues and a couple of yellows. I think the inclusion of Remembrance is absolutely key uh, in this specific deck list and Passing Mirage is just a, a sideboard card. but. This is not the only style of list that you can build this in. And this is kind of why Dromai is super interesting right now and why the meta itself is also going to be super interesting going forward because the deck list that almost won the tournament that uh, Guy was able to dispatch is Matthew Vore's deck list. And this is not like just about anything we've seen up until this point. It sort of is, it sort of isn't. So in a way, this is Big Dragon Dromai. And Big Dragon Dromai, might have uh, some serious game into the meta going forward, depending on how things shift. But it's also got some really cool key tech pieces like Cadaverous Contraband as a two for six that can go and get you non-attack action cards, which can be incredibly good when you wanna go and get like any of these cards <laughs> and put them on top of your deck. Uh, it can also go get you Rake the Embers. This is a card that I had actually slotted in a couple of times early, early on in aggro Dromai, and then I cut because I was like, this doesn't make as much sense, but it makes sense right now. It makes sense quite a bit right now. But then look over here. We're running yellow Oasis Respites. We're running Remembrances, Sink Belows. This is bonkers. Like if that's the case, and I believe I remember correctly that that is the case written on the deck list when I was casting the games, that's shocking. <laughs> That's shocking. And then we go down, and this is a card you may not have uh, recognized or seen at all played, period, end of story, but Pursuit of Knowledge in Dromai just turns out to be quite good because it is a two for four. The worst part about it is that it blocks two, but it creates you two ash. Most of the time you pitch into this by uh, pitching a red or two reds and you create ash. It pushes a break point and it essentially gives you a five card hand next turn. So this is like nourishing emptiness, except it's acting as a blue. And in a deck where you want to play Tomaltai, well, having this amount of blues is really quite good. The one time snap potion can also come into play to do some very cool things. Uh, this is 
This is a shockingly different deck from what everyone expected, and it can play to fatigue far better than the uh, Tome list. And then you, of course, you can look at uh, a very similar Tome list right here with Tome of the Imperial Flame that Jacob piloted uh, quite well. And the idea that Lexi is still and you know closing out her kind of time as the best deck is a little bit maybe challenged at this point with Dromai being the winner. And I would even say in, in a surprisingly like strong fashion, that's kind of a interesting conundrum. Is, is Lexi still the best deck? I mean, you would think it would be because I mean, still three Lexis made it in, but then it just became a Dromai show after like the quarterfinals. Dromai just took everything at the calling DFW. And you know, the interesting part too is we will have ProQuest season along with several other callings to find out as we go forward. But if Dromai, and I should say when Dromai, fully usurps the throne and becomes the de facto best deck in the format, what does it mean for ninjas? What does it mean for uh, Icelander if she's still around? What does it mean for Bravo in the meta? What does it mean for Azuri? Unfortunately, Azuri kind of hated down, pushed down. But what does it mean for Arachne as well, which is also sort of hated and pushed down, but we've actually seen some Arachnes doing work into a field full of dragons. What does it mean for Azalea as well? It's crazy to think, but even with Dromai sort of taking this reins over of this sort of new meta dominance, that this change could conceivably change many things down the line, like Icelander, Azalea, what do those heroes do? What does uh, Azuri become? Can uh, another hero kind of rise from a relative obscurity and play into that? And then like Dash, Merrick Kemp sat on like undefeated throughout all of day one of the calling DFW, made it into the top eight, unfortunately ended up losing before we could really kind of see him push forward and further into that top eight, but showing very highly that Dash has capabilities into a field full of dragons. I, all I'm saying is that this meta that we're about to go into for the World Championship of Flesh and Blood in three weeks or so is going to be fascinating. With Lexi making her way out, maybe even Icelander somehow on the fringe making her way out. We have Dromai to look at. We have Dash to look at. We have Katsu possibly to look at. Maybe you look at Phi in some weird construction. There was a Phi sitting towards the top tables that I believe last I talked with him uh, was on Fatigue Phi and did like uh, X2 with a tie. X2 and 1. Uh, Azalea, Azuri, I mean like Dromai of course sitting at the top. I am so fascinated by what we could see after so many months of Lexi being the talk of the town, Icelander being hot on her heels, Dromai now taking over. What does this mean for the meta? So let me know what you think in a comment below. I want to hear from you on this topic as we go forward towards the World Championships. Do you think Icelander rotates? Do you think Dromai on Tome is the best deck in the format? Is there undiscovered country or unexplored territory in some of these deck lists? Is there a hero that's going to rise up out of nowhere? Let me know any of that and all of that in a comment below. As always, everybody, thanks for watching.